Hi, welcome to Adventures in Engineering. Today I'm going to upgrade to a VFD spindle on my uh, Jinmitsu Prover XL CNC machine. This should be just a bolt-on thing, right? Uh, bolt it on, wire it up, good to go, right? Well, of course not. Um, I have upgraded my Z-axis and there's a couple of things I'm not happy with there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make some modifications to that in the process because I have to take it all off anyway. Um, I have to make a mount for the new VFD spindle, and then I'm gonna have to do all the wiring. So it's never as simple as it ought to be. So let's get into it. Let's start off showing you the issue I have with my Z-axis. I created, uh, well, I updated the Z-axis. I made this plate to mount it uh, to the original assembly, kind of in the way the old Z-axis was mounted, where the, what I guess normally would be the uh, spindle holder is mounted sort of backwards. So, um, but that's the way uh, Jinmitsu did it. But here's my problem. When I come down with this, it actually runs into a mechanical interference problem where this touches this plate. And that is an issue because I'm losing about 20 millimeters of the uh, lead screw here. So it, it is not going down as far as it could. However, it's already down as far as it needs to be down here. So if I was to modify this, I would modify the plate and raise the holes up where it mounts so that that travel would would come upward instead of instead of going downward. But what I've determined is I could just put a spacer here, but again that would that would just lower me to the floor down here and it would just run into the whatever material I have. So what I've determined that I want to do is actually mount it from this side to this plate. So i have turn this whole thing around. In order to mount this in the reverse direction, I'm going to mount it so that it screws go in to this here. And these are approximately, well, they are 60 millimeters apart. So I'm going to turn this around and then I'm going to have to drill holes in this plate here that are 60 millimeters apart and put screws in from behind into uh, screw tabs on here that will hold it up against that, that plate. And so what I've done is created a template that has some little uh, bump outs on it that holds it in place so then I can drill new holes on both top and then turn it over and do it on the bottom on that plate and then once I turn this thing around, I can just screw it into place from behind right there. And it will mount very solidly up against there. And that then will expose this piece, which then the spindle will mount to from the front. However, this CNC machine is currently fully functional. And once I take it apart, it won't be. And so uh, I want to make an adapter plate that goes from the rail slider piece here to the mount holes on the VFD spindle itself. And so that's going to be a sandwich plate, which uh, has holes that screw into this and then holes that match the holes on the VFD. So first I'm going to use it as is and build that new adapter plate. For the mounting plate, I created it in uh, FreeCAD first. And then I printed it with a 3D printer. So what I've got is holes here that mount to that slider back here. And then two other sets of holes. One set is 60 millimeters apart that would mount here if I wanted to mount it on this side. Because I wasn't sure how I was going to go at first. Um, though I could, I could go back if I wanted to. And then these two fit the VFD holes. So the... VFD will have four mount holes, or I could mount four holes to the back side or, you know, front side in, in the current configuration of this Z axis, and then the others mount into here. That way I've got two possible configurations from the same adapter plate. And 
3D printing it allowed me to measure all the all the holes, make sure I had gotten the measurements right, you know, put some screws through them and and verify everything before I go and cut it out of aluminum. Here's my free CAD drawing of the sandwich plate or the mount plate. Uh, the holes with the countersink are going into the slider that goes up and down on the z-axis and the other two sets of holes are going to be either for the face plate or for the moving x-axis plate on the CNC machine, uh, which is the way I'm going to go, but I'm going to leave all the holes there in case I ever want to change back. You can see here I've done a through-hole drilling in the, in the um, path workbench to do all of the holes. Then I do a countersink and then create a separate file for the thread milling because I have to change the bit in between and then a separate file for doing the cutting off of the end of the piece of stock. I'll put feeds and speeds info into the video as you see it being cut out. All right, I'm ready to cut my adapter plate. Uh, first, I'm going to probe the XYZ and find the corner of this piece of stock. So here we go. I've got it. Uh, I've got the probe connected to the um, bit and to the material. Okay, now it is at X, Y, zero, and I believe eight millimeters above the corner on the Z-axis. Okay, this is very exciting. Here we go. I'm going to turn on the air, and then I'm going to start up the part one, which drills the holes in the adapter plate. Well, that concludes part one, which is to drill and countersink all the necessary holes. Next is going to be thread milling. So we're going to thread mill these holes for uh, accepting screws from the VFD spindle.
All right, I've swapped over to the thread mill bit, and now it's time to make some threads. <laughs> Okay, quick test to see how we did. It's an M6 by one screw. Whoops, wrong hole. Let's see, here we go. Oh my, threads right in. Love it. I love it. Winner, winner chicken dinner. Okay, time for part three. Part three is to cut the material off. I'm gonna cut down uh, 12 millimeters of the 12.7 thickness here. Um, and uh, it should make a clean slice just, just to the left of the clamps. <laughs> added a clamp here for the piece and I am going to do the final cut through so I get a nice clean edge and separate the part. Air on. separated. Let's do a little parts check, verify dimensions. So this um, countersink was supposed to be, I believe it was 10.2, and out at the outer edge it's close at 10.16, but as you go deeper it gets down to you know, 9.8. So that's part of the reason I want to upgrade the spindle. I need, I need more power. I think as it starts to go down in there it just can't it just can't cut as deep. And this is supposed to be 5.5, I believe, and see we're at about 5.3. And you can see it just leaves some, some bits around there, bits of metal. You know, it cut through okay, it did a good job. Uh, 
the countersinks and the holes are fine because this is the bolt I'm actually going to use and it fits through. It has a little bit of wiggle room, which is a good thing because this is going to be part of how it's going to uh, be able to tram the new spindle. Um, I already checked the threads on this and they go in just fine. They're just smooth as can be. I did nothing to, to clear that out. Oh, it gets a little tight there at the end, but that's probably due to uh, not going low enough after, but <clears throat> again, I can, I can clean that thread out just a little bit and it's going to be fine. Anyway, overall, it's a good part, but I think it demonstrates, uh, what you can do and also what you're really not going to be able to do, which is number one, go fast, um, with a, with a weak spindle, you know, this is a 400 watt spindle. And then number two, get good, uh, sharp lines and precision while going fast. Uh, that's why I'm upgrading to a VFD spindle. One more thing, you can look at this edge at the, the end cut here. That is not a clean cut. And this is only done with a, a half a millimeter step down on each pass through. And it is just ugly. So uh, again, a more powerful spindle I think would make that a lot cleaner. Well, I've managed to get through a 15 plus minute video about upgrading a VFD spindle without ever actually showing a VFD spindle. So here it is. I'm going to make this a part one video and I'm going to make a part two video where I go through the wiring, programming and mounting of this VFD spindle the next time around. Consider subscribing so you'll get notified when the next video comes out. You never know, if enough of you do, I might make five bucks off of one of these videos one day. See you in the next one.